win it! Wow! Oh man, it being just posterized, Russell Westbrook! You love the Philadelphia Eagles! Let me get a hell yeah! What's going on, guys? What's happening? It is Dives, Mr. Crockpot on Twitter. Welcome to Party on Broad. Super, super special show for you guys today. We have Mike McCartney joining us today. Uh, he is an NFL agent with Priority Sports. Some of his clients include Kirk Cousins, Josh McCown, Haloti Nada, and among others. Uh, make sure you follow Mike on Twitter at Mike McCartney7. How you doing, Mike? I'm doing great. Uh, <laughs> glad to be on the show with you guys. Awesome. Uh, of course, joining us today is our co-host, Jack. Follow him on Twitter, at Jack Connell. TPL, what's going on, man? Nothing much, you know. Free agency is a wild this past week or so. I'm really ready to dive into it, talk some more details about it. But, I mean, NFL draft, I mean, everything's been crazy with everything that's going on. And even without the moves that have happened, it's been incredible. I'm ready to talk about it. Some really crazy times, man. Um, so let's talk about uh, NFL free agency. We're going to talk about the NFL draft. You look at how the NFL responded to the coronavirus recently, including plans to hold the draft without fans present. OTAs have been postponed. Team facilities have been shut down. Interactions between players and team staff have basically been banned. Uh, and then you move on to the draft, and it's literally one month from now. Uh, Mike, can you talk a little bit about what life is like in the NFL for agents and all the players? Yeah, it's been a crazy week. It, it really started... Um... I would say when I went to bed last Saturday night, uh, eight nights ago, not knowing if the CBA was going to pass or not, I found myself waking up every two hours, checking Twitter to see if, if there was something there that said we had passed. And of course, we found out probably about 10 or 11 o'clock Sunday morning that the players did pass the vote only by 60 votes, which was uh, very indicative of <laughs> uh, a player base that split. Uh, so then at that point, Sunday morning, we don't know if we're even going to have free agency. You know, there was wide speculation that it was going to be postponed. And early that evening, we uh, it was announced that we're going to go ahead and have it. So, of course, a lot of people were questioning that decision. I think as it's turned out, it's probably been a pretty good diversion for sports fans in, 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 the, in our country. Uh, but, yeah, so then Monday comes. And, um, you know, for me personally, I represent Joe Tooney. And... Uh, I had talked to the Patriots, you know, throughout this process, but the words franchise tag had never come up and uh, free agency starts at 11 o'clock where I live in Chicago and at 1030, I get that call that they're going to put the franchise tag on them. So I also woke up Sunday or excuse me, Monday morning, finishing Kirk, Con Kirk Cousins contract. So it's been a blur. It's been a lot going on since <laughs> I've had a couple other guys I've had to do free agent deals for and yeah, there's a lot going on right now. It, uh, trying to figure out physicals has been uh, very challenging. Every team handles it different. Uh, some teams are willing to um, have a player go see a neutral physician. And, you know, this is where you have to rely on relationships, uh, where you got to uh, have a level of trust with the team and the team's got to have a level of trust with the agent that will work together on that. Um, one of the things that's not talked about that's been a real headache this week is e-signatures. <laughs> the NFL, un, unbeknownst to me, will not, or the reason unbeknownst to me, will not allow e-signatures. When I'm in the office, it's okay. I've got a, a, a big old printer available to me. I can scan, not a big deal. Uh -huh. When I'm at home, it's a challenge. Furthermore, for players, it's a real challenge. Now, the NBA allows e-signatures. I think banks and financial institutions allow millions upon millions of dollars to flow through based on e-signatures, but the National Football League will not, and it's still 2020. That has created a lot of headaches this week um, and challenges. So uh, it's been a fun week, though. You know, it's uh, it's been for me a, a normal week in a sense of uh, there's been a lot to do, uh, and you know normally I would. I would have I would have tried to uh, watch a little March Madness with this, but it allowed me just to get all in on the NFL. Absolutely, go ahead, Jack. Do you want to ask a question? Well, I was just—I mean, that's kind of interesting. Even with players, their inability to get out if they don't have a scanner with them to get those e signatures in. I mean, hopefully that's something that will change in the future. Do you think there's any change in that? Or that's just... I, I don't know. I, I asked team guys you know got general managers cap guys and they're all perplexed as to why 
I've uh, inquired with the PA. You know, Kirk Cousins and I had a very uh, interesting day on Wednesday because we had to get his contract signed because it was an extension. It was going to change his cap number, and we had to do it before the league year started at 4 o'clock Eastern on Wednesday. So we went through a, a couple different uh, rounds of getting first getting e-signatures, and then, um, you know, we tried it a different way. And finally, he, he, he didn't have the ability at his house. I downloaded an app and just kept turning the page, taking a picture. Well, that took a few takes, you know. <laughs> Kirk ended up going to uh, uh, an office in his town where he lives. And, and we had a couple hours to spare when it was all said and done. But it was a good thing we started at 9 a.m. trying to get that figured out. <laughs> wow. wow. So, yeah. And so you're looking at the craziness and uh, dates that have been put on like pro days. Like a lot of them have been shut down, not being able to bring in players to work out. As you're somebody who works with a lot of players, who tends to be hurt the most with this 2020 draft? And who do you think are the players that can benefit from this with the limitations of workouts? Yeah, so there's been a lot of commentary uh, about this on Twitter. Uh, I'm I'm not, and there's been articles written. I don't personally see the doom and gloom in all this. I think that it's going to benefit teams that scout, that that uh, you know do a great job in the fall, uh, watching the tape, running down uh, the character of players. Uh, certainly, they're not going to know everything about every single player, but you know, there's a little overkill at this time of year. And I think you know what guys should, what teams should be doing is going back to the tape. We're going to have the same number of guys drafted. We're going to have the same number of guys signed after the draft. And to me, the poster child for all of this is a guy I represent and Philip Lindsay. Philip Lindsay had a great career at Colorado, uh, both in the run game, pass game, statistics backed it up. He had a really good week at the East West All-Star game. And, and then he goes and runs a 4-3-9 at his pro day. And he goes undrafted. So where's the doom and gloom for me? I don't get it. Now, I understand not having a pro day for small school guys is very difficult. And so right now there's uh, agents and, and people in the draft community are trying to come together to find ways to have some, you know, some pro days where they're going to stream the video from start to finish to show the NFL that a guy's not you know, going to have eight tries at his 40. You know, I think teams are going to, some teams are going to uh, go ahead and, and use that data. Some probably won't. Uh, but I, I really do think at the end of the day, it'll go back to old school scouting. And the teams that rely on their coaches heavily in this process, yeah, they're going to be hurt. Teams that rely heavily on their scouts, I think will do a good job and, and actually benefit from this. Yeah, that that's like where I went immediately to are the guys that weren't invited to the combine, the guys that weren't at the senior bowl. Those are the guys I think, you know, it's kind of like what, what what happens with these guys, man? Yeah, again, Philip Lindsay was at an all-star game. Now, he wasn't at the combine, but he did have a pro day and the 32 teams passed on him for 250 some odd picks. Wow. So, you know, there's um, I, the NFL is going to. They're going to draft who they want to draft based on tape. You know, I always felt like 90% of the grade is tape anyway. Um, are there teams that will uh, put a heavier emphasis on times and and kind of work out warriors? Sure. But hopefully the guys who can play football and whose tape speaks for themselves will benefit you know, in this process. It's Yeah, it will definitely hurt some players and it's going to benefit others. We're going to have the same number of draft picks. <laughs> Um, quick question. So far, no NFL players that currently, <laughs> as we know, have the coronavirus. Uh, I think only Sean Payton is the only one here. But like, there's a lot of reporting and Twitter stuff. You talk a lot with the players. Are, are the players upset if, if they're told by, you know, social media that they t tested positive? Like, what's what's it like behind the scenes with that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, as you as you mentioned, I haven't heard of any player that's tested positive. I haven't heard from any of my players. I think from a medical standpoint, you know, it's players are kind of resigned to the fact that whatever happens to them is going to be reported. You know, so I don't think too many guys get upset at that. What I think is really interesting, though, is I'm not sure we're going to have much of an off season, and you know, if we do have an off season, it's probably not going to start till June at the earliest. 
And let's say we don't have an off season and we get to training camp, sort of like 2011 when they're when the players were locked out. What I find fascinating is will every player come into shape? And I contend it's going to be very difficult for offensive linemen in particular to maintain their weight. Um, you know, it's hard to eat that much food all the time when you're on your own. It's hard to lift weights and keep your weight at the right amount. So it's going to be, it could be a real sloppy training camp if we don't have an off season. It, it could be really uh, a sloppy from a uh, standpoint of injuries. And so I think some of the free agent decisions we're making now, you know, we have to think through those things. Uh, but it's just, it's going to be a fascinating off season. Guys sometimes are calling me and, you know, hey, what do you think? I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. <laughs> you know, what I mean, I think we're all, whether it's sports, NFL, or just in our life, we're all taking this day by day right now because no one knows when this thing is is gonna uh, stop or or how long it's gonna continue. Do you think? I mean, I'm just this is a complete guess. Do you think the start date stays where it is, or do you think we get pushed back? Or you that the just start like, of the season? Yeah, oh, start, yeah. I I again, I don't know. Like I, I think. You know, it, it feels like our country probably is at or nearing a tipping point with um, this virus. And, and I'm in Illinois. We're all in sort of home lockdown right now. I haven't, other than down the street to a, an empty gym where I train by myself right now, I haven't left the house in now yeah. nine days or eight days. So our whole family is is uh, self-quarantining and trying to be really intelligent about this. And, you know, if we do... Uh, most of our country stays indoors the next 14, 15 days. Let's, you know, the hope is obviously that this thing slows down rapidly. Um, but who knows? It could come back, and there's just so much unknown right now. You you just said you haven't left your house almost for like nine days. So this is kind of the biggest point in the season where you're trying to sign clients, like right for the draft, figure out when the combine would be. How difficult has it been to try to bring in guys with the inability to do travel? Yeah, so we actually in football assign the players right when the season ends. And so almost every player within a couple days of the last bowl game are signed. So we've had our group of 11 players at Priority Sports signed up since early to mid-January. We've gone through the, uh, the uh, draft training phase, which is usually January and February. Uh, as you said earlier, you know, some guys went to the combine, some didn't. So we're kind of working closely with the guys that didn't go to the combine. We have a couple guys that ran at the combine and were disappointed and thought they could run better. So we're trying to see if there's maybe a pro day, you know, in the in their state that they can drive to that, you know, either former NFL scouts or, you know, people streaming can send it to teams. So we're working with those guys right now. But yeah, we've been the nice thing is for us, we've already signed guys. My firm also represents basketball players and they're in the heart of recruiting right now and they're doing it all by video conference. That is a great challenge for our basketball guys and, and, and for the kids themselves to try and figure out who the best agent is based on a video conference. I, I think there, there's gonna be some mistakes made here in the NBA. Now for some people that don't know, who are some of the rookie clients that you brought on this season? Uh, so we have Brian Lewerke, the Michigan State quarterback, Jake Breeland, the Oregon tight end, um, Graylin Arnold, the safety at uh, Baylor, Jay Sean Cornell, a uh, three tech at Ohio State, James Smith Williams, NC State defensive end. You're putting me on the spot here. Danny Pinter, uh, <laughs> offensive lineman from Ball State, Joe Gaziano, from uh, a pass rusher from Northwestern, uh, Evan Weaver, uh, Cal linebacker, uh, Alohi Gilman, the safety at Notre Dame, and then Brock Reuter. Reuter the uh, D3 player of the year at North Central College. They won the national championship. He's quarterback there. I think I hit everybody. <laughs> if I missed one, please forgive me. <laughs> what What are they saying about the NFL draft? Because I, we're big draft junkies. We love the NFL draft. We love watching the NFL draft. Is there any kind of like discontent from the players that they're not going to be able to attend the draft and, you know, kind of be, you know, on that stage, that center stage? Yeah, so I, I, I'll, I'll answer that first by saying the draft is completely miserable for me, okay? <laughs> <laughs> the waiting game is horrific. Um, you know, I, I too love the NFL. I've been in it 28 years. I love, you know, uh, knowing what's going on behind the scenes. And draft day is miserable. When we get together Saturday night and, and 
you know, kind of let our hair out, whatever there's there. Um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's like one of my favorite nights of the year. With that said, we don't have anybody that would have been invited to the green room. So I don't think um, I'm probably the best one to answer that. Okay. Uh, I, it is what it is, right? I, you know, um, at least they're going to get drafted. You know, yeah. think about the guys in, in the NCAA basketball tournament, college baseball. Like there's so, you know, every spring sport, they might lose their last chance ever to play competitively at, at that level. And at least the NFL guys are going to get drafted. So it may not be perfect with uh, lack of pro days. It may not be perfect with what how the draft day is, you know, experience is going to unfold. But at least they get to go through that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah you talked about earlier, um, Kirk's got a two-year, $66 million extension from Minnesota. How excited or eager are you about to get that deal out of Minnesota? Uh, I think you asked me how excited was he about it. Yeah, so, um, yeah, he's he's very excited. You know, um, two years ago, we went into free agency, and we had a number of teams. And, you know, as a player, you, you know, you don't know what you're really walking into. It used to be in free agency where there wasn't such a rush to get deals done that players could take visits and really get a, a feel for the organization, the coaches, you know, just the camaraderie and, and feel for the culture of the, the place. You can't do that anymore. And um, there's just such a rush to get these deals done. So, you know, Kirk uh, relied heavily on me, of course, and, and his own research. And when when he chose Minnesota, you know, we left a lot of money on the tel table elsewhere. And we did it for, um, you know, football reasons. We wanted, to, you know, him to go to a place where he could succeed. And, and so for the to go to Minnesota and have the two years, go to the playoffs, win a game this year, and have the team say, hey, we really want you, Kirk, to be our guy for the foreseeable future is very rewarding. And then to have them step up and, and give them a two-year extension. And, you know, two years was important to us uh, for a variety of reasons. But just, you know, I can't say enough good things about the Vikings and how they handled it all. And, and it was a um, very exciting Monday. Um, and then even more exciting, we, we put actual pen to paper on Wednesday since we couldn't do it electronically. <laughs> uh, Mike Evans finally has a, uh, an elite quarterback in Tampa Bay. I think the, the biggest news of the last week has been Tom Brady signing with the Buccaneers. Do you think that brings them to Super Bowl contenders? What's your thoughts on that? Yeah, you would think, right? I mean, Brady is the greatest to ever have played the game. Uh, I do think just looking at it football-wise, it's an – Interesting and maybe a little bit of an odd pairing from a, a scheme standpoint. Bruce Arians has always been a, court, a, a head coach, play caller that wants to push the ball downfield, long, uh, deep drops. You know, his quarterbacks get sacked a lot, uh, but they also have a lot of big plays in the passing game. Brady's kind of the opposite. You know, he's a little more of a quick, uh, you know, a precision passer, uh, works the short to intermediate passing zones very well. And, you know, um, so that part is an interesting, you know, to see how it's going to unfold. You know, obviously, uh, Coach Arians is a great coach, and I'm sure he'll be able to adjust to a great quarterback, as well Brady. With that said, yeah, Mike Evans, um, Chris Godwin, the tight end they have, there's some weapons there. And so Brady's got to be excited about that. Warm weather, you know, there's, he's got to be reinvigorated, you know, going to a new team and you know, and of course, who he is, he's going to be widely celebrated. So I think the whole league is going to uh, watch that, you know, um, closely. Is Brady going to ever feel the effects of his age? You know, you would think eventually he would, you know. So it's going to be fascinating to watch. It was a, it's was, it been a fascinating quarterback market to watch. He was the first domino sort of to have to fall. And, um, yeah, he, you know, Tom Brady and the whole quarterback market made this week you know, just a, a really unique and fun one to, to experience as well. It's just a weird deal because I feel like you always, if you are someone leaving, it would be for a big market. Like you would see him in Los Angeles or back in his hometown, San Francisco. And it's just like, it's like in, in between people. It's not a small market, but it's just like a random team to see the best player on. It's just a weird one for me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And the, the, already the... Uh, the uniforms that people are putting on Twitter, the internet are odd, you know, it just, it's weird. But um, 
it's also cool to see that you know Brady uh, after 20 years uh, gets to choose wherever he wants to play and you know he chose a place that's got weapons and and you know I have the starting center Ryan Jensen you know on that team and um, you know Ryan's gonna have a lot of fun blocking for Brady and you know the one thing about Brady for offensive linemen he gets rid of the ball quickly and that's why it's fascinating to me to pair him with Bruce Arians in that offense and just to see how they come together. I, I'm going to really enjoy watching that. Yeah, I think they're going to be really good. Um, so another thing we want, I mean, the big draft debate, well, this, before the injury occurred, was Tua Tagovailoa and Joe Burrow have been two incredible quarterbacks. Like we both know it, Joe Burrow can go one, Tua will go somewhere in the top five range. Who do you think has a better career between two of them? Yeah, great question. Uh, I don't know how you bet against Burrow right now, just the way everything unfolded this year. You know, and then Tua is, uh, uh, he's got some Brady qualities, very accurate, quick decision. You worry about some of the injury history. You know, um, the one, you know, I guess it's not necessarily concerned, but the one thing that happens when you play at LSU and you play at Alabama is you, you lead the league in open receivers and time to throw the football. And, you know, I think we see a lot of quarterbacks uh, from elite programs come to the NFL. And it's, it's, it's an eye opener in many cases because what an open receiver in college looks like is not the same in the NFL or vice versa. So I think, you know, Burrow is, uh, he just seems like he's got such an innate feel in the pocket and, and, uh, for timing and all that, um, but it's going to be an adjustment. You know, it's, there's there those windows are a lot smaller, and they close a lot quicker in pro football. So that's why you see some of these top programs. You know, quarterbacks come from or quarterbacks from top programs come and they get drafted high and they can't make that change. You know, the the ability to process quickly in the pocket when things are just a lot different than they were in college. It's, it remains to be seen. But if you're going to put me on the spot, I'll, I'll probably pick Burrow. Uh, Chris well, Williams. Uh, What's that? Burrow, Joe Burrow, oh, for sure. And that, that guy just was absolutely dynamite. Uh, last question, Mike. Uh, we're big Eagles fans here. Uh, Carson Wentz, this is a guy that showed, you know, flashed uh, signs of greatness, but he, ba he has battled injury after injury. What's kind of the outside perspective uh, in your world of Carson Wentz? Yeah, I, I think just that. He's got all the tools and, um, you know, if he can stay healthy and put it together, you know, with a healthy receiving core, he should, uh, you know, flourish. I'll share an interesting uh, story. So uh, in the playoff, uh, first playoff weekend, uh, my family and I get back from church on Sunday morning and, and Minnesota's playing at New Orleans in the first game. The Eagles are hosting Seattle in the second game. And I said to my wife, you know, Hey, Jenny, I could have two winning quarterbacks today. <laughs> and she says, Josh? And I said, yeah, you know, Carson Wentz, he does get hurt. Um, I ain't been hurt this year, but you never know. So the first three hours, I, it's a grueling, uh, you know, I, I love football. I love watching it, but it's intense because, you know, you get so much invested in a guy in Kirk, you know, in our relationship. So he wins the game and, and I, and I watch by myself in the basement and um, I come upstairs and, you know, I'm taking a deep breath and I'm like, all right, let's go see if Josh can be the second winner. And sure enough, you know, Carson goes out with the concussion and Josh, Josh McCown was the first guy I ever signed. Uh, we have a special relationship. Uh, we've done what, 98 contracts together because <laughs> wow. he's been with everybody in the league, it seems like. So watching him, Man, was it emotional. I mean, it was, um, I it just can't root harder for a guy. Right. You know, I mean, he's 40 years old. He had never played in a playoff game. And I didn't know about the hamstring at the point, at that point when, you know, he, he tore it off the bones. So knew he was hurting. And, but, you know, just to get to the nine yard line with a chance to tie the game, it was, it was such an emotional day. And, I ended up one for one, but yeah, to your, to your point, you know, Carson's got a chance to be special. He's just got to uh, put it all together and he put, he's only been in the league with four or five years. So mm -hmm. I would think, you know, he's just going to continue to get better. He's got tools. Mm -hmm. He's conscientious. He's got everything you need to be a great one. Do you think Josh is going to play another year in the league? Has there been any interest in him? 
there there actually has been interest both from a playing standpoint and a coaching standpoint he did tear the hamstring off the bone he did have surgery it's a six-month rehab what we said is we're going to approach uh just like we did a year ago he's got uh four kids uh he had never really seen his uh, boys play high school football so he coaches that uh, his boys high school football team so what we said a year ago we're going to do the same Hey, Josh, go coach your kids, go enjoy your spring and summer. Something will happen in August or September. It happens every year. So if, if the right team calls you, great, we'll, we'll, we'll consider it. And if the right team doesn't call, then enjoy your life coaching your kids. So you don't know. I mean, somebody could call us November 15th and say, hey, there's six weeks left in a playoff run. We need Josh. You know, Josh has got a lot to offer. And I think even a healthy Josh at 40, 41, whatever he's going to be, still has something to offer. Could not agree more. That Watching him uh, be the quarterback for the Eagles in that playoff game, he was great. He was he actually played very well, I thought. Yeah, and so, and, and, and mind you, he doesn't get any reps during the yeah. week, right? He, he really hadn't gotten a rep since August. You know, he had two weeks of reps after he signed. The game plan is to is totally designed for Carson Wentz at that time. Furthermore, there's hardly any receivers that Josh had thrown the ball to in <laughs> August because they're all new. Yeah, you know. And then, to, and then to add the fact that he had this injury, you know, he made an interesting comment to me. He said, "You know, I didn't. I mean, Josh. Josh says I didn't grow up in the spread offense where there's all this pre-step snap motion and trying to time everything up perfectly. And I never got a rep doing it." That's all we did with Carson. And so when I get in the game, I'm like, oh my gosh, there's so much going on right now. And then Jason Kelsey snaps the ball harder than anybody in America. And so if you go back and watch that game, he, he dropped a couple of those snaps because <laughs> he's trying to time everything up. He's trying to think about where he's going to go with the ball, reading the defense, and then the ball's coming back at a, at a, at a good clip. So um, yeah, it, for him to play that well, you know, with all that as a backdrop, you know, it's pretty and, and being 40 is in his first playoff game, pretty remarkable. I don't think we see that that kind of uh, opportunity and performance very often. Yeah, I'd love to see him come back to the Eagles. What about you, Jack? I would love for him to come back. I mean, you kind of mentioned a little bit he in a coaching uh, opportunities. I think he'd be a fantastic quarterback coach. Yeah. Pretty much I mean, uh, if he does if he decides to coach, even if he plays, he'll be a solid backup wherever he goes. Or if he was first, I think he's a really good coaching incredible. Yeah, so he's got two boys. They're going to be a junior and sophomore in high school. He's got a little girl behind them. But my best guess is he's not going to start the coaching thing until after his boys get out of high school. And then at that point, you know, it wouldn't surprise me if he's a head coach within four to five years of starting his coaching career. Love it. And, you know, the only thing I'm going to demand is I'm sitting with his wife in the box. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um... Thank you so much, Mike, for joining, man. Make sure you follow Mike on Twitter. Um, what is it? Uh, at Mike McCartney 7. Uh, yes. Thanks so much, man. Yeah, this has been great. Appreciate you guys. Oh, Appreciate awesome. you, too. Let's see what happens, right? <laughs> so, stay safe. It's a crazy time, <laughs> too, man. For Mike, for Jack, thanks for watching, guys. Stay awesome. Westbrook. You love the Philadelphia Eagles. Let me get it.